there's more than just supernova. There's more than just clusters. There's a bunch of different ways uh, that cosmologists can use to try and learn something about this mysterious stuff. And Josh, you were a theorist that, that got driven to ob observation because it looked like, and I agree with you, probably the only useful knowledge we'll get on it is from, from observation. We'll see. Um, and, and you've been leading this dark energy uh, survey, so, so, so maybe you can talk a little bit about why, what you're doing and why. With the discovery of the accelerating universe from the supernova, the confirmation from the cosmic microwave background, I think we realized that we needed to do these sorts of observations on an industrial scale. Uh, Adam's measurements involved a few tens of supernovae. To reach, the, to get those next one to two orders of magnitude of precision and trying to pin down the nature of dark energy and really determine whether it's a cosmological constant or the vacuum or something else, we really need to, to do much more larger scales, more ambitious surveys. And so we put together a team of physicists and astronomers, now numbering over 300 people, and we've built a new camera we call the dark energy camera, which you see here. It has 570 megapixels. Uh, so it's one of the world's most powerful cameras. It can, unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, it doesn't have the same resolution of the Hubble, but it can see a very wide swath of the sky, uh, where the Hubble is, is very good for zooming in on very small regions of the sky and looking very deeply. So it's very complementary to what we can do from space. And we mounted this, tel this camera uh, now three years ago on this telescope uh, in Chile. It's at the Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory. This is the Blanco telescope. It has a, a mirror of about, that's about four meters across. And incidentally, this was the same telescope that was the primary telescope used by Adam and his colleagues and also the other team of astronomers in the mid to late 90s uh, to look at these supernovae and discover that the universe is speeding up. So it has a, a, a rich history. Uh, but to carry out an, a, a new survey, we needed to build a new instrument for this telescope, and, th and that's what the dark energy camera is. And so we take what we are doing, uh, we've starting two years ago and continuing for the next several years, is just taking snapshots over a very broad swath of the sky, and we'll eventually have snapshots like this one of about 300 million galaxies. And in addition, we will also uh, take repeated snapshots of the same parts of the sky to discover supernovae, uh, and uh, we will eventually measure the, the distances to about 4,000 of these distant supernovae. Uh, we'll also measure clusters of galaxies, like, uh, like Priya is doing, and we'll use this gravitational lensing phenomenon uh, to again try to under disentangle uh, the nature of dark energy by using, the, the, the important thing to remember is dark energy sort of has two uh, imprints on what we can observe. Mm -hmm. One is it, it affects distances to distant objects, that's the supernova probe, it's also the, the probe that Pri is using for clusters. It also affects how structure in the universe evolves. It, it affects how those little lumps that we see in the microwave background, how those evolve into this rich distribution of galaxies. And so the interplay, the competition between gravity and dark energy is something we can probe by doing these very large surveys. Well, maybe you can explain something. That you're taking a bunch of pictures. You're not taking a movie. Right. So maybe you would explain how you might talk about, your, if you're talking about the growth of structure, right. how do you, can you see that in a bunch of pictures? Right. So this is actually, this is an example, another example, one of the first pictures we took. So what we can do with, the, with a survey like this is uh, we take pictures through several different filters. Uh, going from near ultraviolet light to near infrared light through across the optical spectrum. And so we get not only a snapshot, but we measure the colors of these 300 million galaxies. And it turns out that the colors give you an approximate estimate of the distance to these galaxies. And so we can make maps uh, sort of in time slicings going back through cosmic history uh, over a period of 8 to 10 billion years back into the past. Uh, and by seeing how the distribution of galaxies changes with time, how the lensing affects nearby versus more distant objects, we can try to unpack uh, this competition over time between dark energy and dark matter. Mm -hmm.